Hello everyone. And last time we have learned the beginning of the chapter, uh, chapter five about a network layer. We will talk about uh, network layer design issues, routing algorithm, internet working, and the network in the internet. Uh, we were uh, focused on three major questions. That is uh, a protocol, protocol packet format, addressing, and uh, routing algorithms. Routing algorithms, packet format, and the addressing. Routing is based on addressing. A network layer is concerned with uh, getting packets from the source to the destination uh, through many hops. And we will uh, introduce the network network layer based on uh, such a figures it is a simple topology including horse and several routers and usually network uh, uses adopted the mechanism of store and forwarding. Store and forwarding is the basis of the uh, networking mechanisms that make the packet uh, uh, delivered from the source to the destination. 
So slowing forward is the basis uh, mechanisms of networking. Network layers provide services to the transport layer and the network and network their transport layer interface. Interface is between the two layers. Important question is uh, precisely what kind of services the network layer provides to the transport layer. What kind of services we know services includes uh, uh, two classes, uh, connection oriented and uh, connectionless services. Services need to be carefully designed with the following goals in mind. Uh, services should be independent of the rotor te uh, technology. Rotor techno techno technology and uh, transport layer should be shielded from the number type and the topology of the routers present. Topology that means how the routers are connected, how many links, how many routers and how they are connected, that means topology. Network addresses made available to the transport layer should use a uniform plan, a uniform numbering plan, even across LAN and WAMS. So uh, services should, consider, should be designed by considering these properties in independent, shared, uniform numbering plans. Given these goals, the de designers of the network there have a lot of freedom in writing detailed specifications of services to be offered to the transport layer. This freedom often uh, degenerates into a really battle between two warring functions. Uh, these two warring functions means they argue different uh, viewpoints of designing the services uh, using connection oriented or connectionless service. They have different uh, uh, opinions. The internet community argues that uh, the router's job is moving packets around nothing else. That is based on 40 years of experience with a real computer network. The 40 years, that means the, the internet emerged about uh, uh, in 1970, 1970. So uh, now, probably based on 50 years of experience uh, with a real computer network, the network is inherently unreliable, no matter how it is designed. The horse should accept this fact and do arrow control and flu control themselves. So all these things, including arrow control and flu control, the horse should do these things by themselves. This is the appealing from internet community. And it is also called end-to-end -end arguments. End-to-end -end arguments, in particular, no packet ordering and flow control should be done 
in the network because the hosts are going to do that anyway and then there is usually little to be gained by doing it twice so doing it twice means that if we doing this things in the network layer but uh, the transport layer also doing the same thing that means twice so this reasoning is an example of the end-to-end -end argument Furthermore, each packet uh, must uh, carry the full destination address because each packet sent is carried independently of its predecessors. Then, with different opinions, uh, by the telephone company, they argue that the network, especially communication network, should provide a reliable connection-oriented service. Connection-oriented service, and that means network should provide a reliable service. The network should rely should provide reliable services. Also, the network links are not unreliable, but uh, the network should provide reliable service. They claimed that 100 years of successful experience. So both network and telecommunication network are successful. So they, with 100 years of successful experience, with the worldwide telephone system is an excellent guide. So they argue different uh, opinions. In this view, quality of service is the dominant factor. And without connections in the network, quality of service is very difficult to achieve, especially for real-time traffic, such as voice and videos now voice video uh, applications video streaming applications are widely used for example a uh, video conference <clears throat> uh, uh, implementation of connectionless service to different uh, organizations are possible uh, depending on the types of uh, service offered. If connectionless service is offered, packets are injected into the network individually and rooted in, independently of each other. No advanced setup is needed so connectionless service connectionless service no advanced setup is needed so setup is not needed no advanced setup that means the connection connection is not needed so no advanced setup in this context the packets are frequently called datagrams. Datagrams are similar with uh, telegrams, and network is called a datagram network. If connection oriented service is used, uh, a path from the source router all the way to the destination router must be a uh, destination router must be established before any data packets can be sent this connection is called vc virtual circuit in analog ways uh, the physical circuits set up by the telephone system the, the network is called virtual circuit network 
So uh, this uh, figure, figure two, shows the routing within a datagram network. So the datagram network, the rotors in the network has the rotor ha has uh, is a routing table, and the table and the routing table probably uh, changes. This is initially, but after some time, later, it changes to this one. This is a datagram network, and network. And the rotors delivered in datagram network based on the routing table and each packet carries its full destination address. Each table entry is a pair consisting of a destination and outgoing line to use for that destination. For example, here A means if a packet arrived, if a packet has address, a destination address is A, and the packet arrive at A, that means the packet is sent to itself, so forwarding is not needed, right? The second pair, if a packet arrive at rotor A, if a packet arrive at A, and, and if the destination of the packet is B, so the rotor A should forward this packet to B. This is B, right? If this packet arrive at A and the destination address is a C, a rotor should forward this packet to C. So the, the forward outgoing line to C. If the destination is a D, the packet should arrive at a B. If the destination is a D, the forward a rotor A should forward it this packet to B, then to D. So this is outgoing line of A. Only directly connected lines can be used. So uh, what about the next, the next uh, outgoing? Then that is not the, uh, the consideration of rotor A. IP uh, is the basis of the entire internet, the dominant example of connectionless network service. Uh, each packet carries a destination IP address that routers use to in individually forward each packet. The addresses are 32 bits in IPv4 packets and 128 bits in IPv6 packets. Uh, for connection or rented service, uh, we need a virtual circuit network. Let's see how that works. Now, when a connection is established, connection is established, a router, a route from the source machine to the destination machine is chosen as part of the connection setup and stored in the routers, inside the routers. That route is used for 
all traffic flowing over the connection exactly the same way that the telephone system works. When the connection is released, the virtual circuit is also terminated. Uh, with a uh, connection oriented service, each packet carries a identifier. Carries each packet carries an identifier, not a destination address. For connection oriented service, virtual circuit should be set up advanced. So each packet carries an identifier turning which virtual circuit it belongs to. So the packets, each packet belongs to a certain virtual circuit. So the packet should carry an identifier turning the routers, which virtual circuit it belongs to. For example, this uh, H host H1 to H2, we can set up a virtual circuit one. And host three to host two we have virtual circuit two, virtual circuit two. That is why we identified it with one and two. Um, this is a virtual circuit. Virtual circuit, uh, um, probably this uh, identifier of virtual circuit has local meanings. So local meanings, it is not a global meanings. So figure three shows the routing within virtual circuit network. This is uh, the road, uh, virtual circuit table of rotor A. This is the road virtual circuit table of rotor C. Just now we see this is a rotor routing table. Then this kind of table usually called the switch table, switch table. This is a routing table for C, this is a routing table for E. Here, host H1, Host H1 here, right? Host H1. Has established the connection one. Has established the connection one with the host two. Establish the connection one. Connection one with the host H2. This connection is remembered as the first entry in each of the routing table. In each of routing table. H host packet delivered by host H1 with the identifier 1 here. We are delivered to. We are delivered to. 
rotor C, then give a rotor one. So this is a rotor one, ro uh, host H one, establish the connection one, right? Host one, establish the connection one with host one. And this connection is remembered as the first entry in each of the routing table. It's a routing table, host, host one, one, rotor one, one, and rotor C here, horse one. And the first line of a rotor A's table says, if a packet bearing connection identifier one comes in from host H one, it is to be sent to rotor C and it gives the connection identifier one. So the the here one is the the connection identifier but here this this identifier number means the identifier given to the packet right and the given connection identifier and the send to root C. So to the root C, the packet with identifier one from A, then forward to root E and give the connection identifier one. Then, then reach that uh, root E with connection, uh, with connection identifier one from root C, right? Then delivered to root F and given the connection file one. And given to the uh, one, then the, Host two is directed connected uh, to the router F. Then the packet will arrive at the host H two. So uh, the properties of hop hop by hop is this is the same with each other, but uh, the virtual circuit network uses the a virtual circuit switching table. That is a labial switching, not the destination address. It is based on the labial or connection identifier. Uh, both virtual circuit both virtual circuits and uh, datagrams have their supporters and their detractors. Uh, the major issues are listed in the figure in figure four. Uh, from the this table, uh, datagrams and network and uh, virtual circuit network, uh, it shows they have different uh, properties on these issues, including circuit setup, addressing state information, routing, effect of routing failure, uh, QoS, congestion control, uh, for 
datagram network and the virtual circuit network, they have different uh, properties. Uh, for example, uh, circuit setup for datagram network not needed, but uh, for virtual circuit network required. So the circuit setup is required is required uh, by virtual circuit network. Addressing, addressing for datagram network, each packet contains the full source and destination address. But uh, for virtual circuit network, each packet contains a short virtual circuit number. This is also called neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, neighbor. <clears throat> uh, state information. State information for datagram network. Routers do not hold state information about the connectionness. But for virtual circuit network, each virtual circuit requires Routers table space for connection. Uh, router router table space per connection. That means uh, each uh, routing table or routing uh, switching table uh, based on each connection. So if we have four four connections, that means the routing table has the four entries. So the number of connections is the same as the number of the entry of uh, in routing table. The routing routing. For datagram network, each packet is routed independently. Independently, that means uh, each packet uh, have each packet is routed with uh, each packet is independently. That means uh, the we are probably uses different uh, paths. They probably use the different uh, links, but uh, usually, but usually, each packet uh, uses the same path, but uh, it is not certain uh, with in in the uh, full, fully different. So each packet is independent. That means. Uh, it is not necessary for each packet as the same pass. So that is, is exactly meaning of independently. Uh, for virtual circuit network, road basin, uh, road uh, chosen when VC is set up, all packets follow it. That means uh, each packet uh, uses the same path, use the same path uh, through the same VC. So that means the packets belong to that belong to the same VC has the same path has the same path. So it is the different for datagram network routed independently for virtual circuit network follow all packets follow the same VC follow the same VC. Uh, effects of effects of rotor failure. 
uh, if if root failures occur for datagram network, non non effect except for packets lost during the crash. So usually we we say datagram network is robust and reliable than virtual circuit. That is why during rotor failure, there's no effect for datagram network. To circuit network, all VCs that pass through the field rotor are terminated. Enter the virtual circuit uh, will be set up again. Probably if the the rotor failures uh, if affect the the quality of service of virtual circuit. So all VCs are terminated. Uh, quality of service. Quality of service uh, is implemented. is difficult to realize. Quality of service is difficult to real to realize for datagram network, but uh, it is easy for virtual circuit network. Uh, if enough resource can be allocated in advance for each VC. So if the key is if here. So if if we have enough resource then, then virtual circuit can provide quality of service and it is easy. But if there is no enough resources in advance, then it is difficult to for virtual circuit, right? Congestion control. Congestion control is difficult for datagram, but it is easy for virtual circuit. Then the condition is if enough resources can be allocated in advance for each VC. So uh, the allocated in advance, that is the that is a, a resource reservation. Resource reserv uh, resource reservation for virtual circuit. So uh, we should understand the the different uh, characteristics between datagram network and the virtual circuit. That is comparison of, of the, these uh, uh, two kinds of networks. Inside the network, several trade-offs exist uh, between virtual circuits and the datagram. This uh, trade-off that means uh, the performance, the performance. We have different performance. One trade-off is set up time, set up time, versus address passing time. Set up time for virtual circuit. Address passing time for datagram network because packets have four destination address, four destination address. But virtual circuits need in advance connection setup. Using virtual circuit requires setup fees.
uh, which uh, takes time and consumes resources. Here, resources means uh, memory, bandwidth, processing, processing CPU slot, processing CPU slot, memory, and then bandwidth. So it takes time and consume resources. However, once this pr price is paid, once this price, what what price is paid? This is set up fees. The price of set up fees. Figuring out what to do with a data packet in a virtual circuit network is easy. Uh, <clears throat> the rotor just uses the circuit number to index into a table to find out where the packet goes. In the datagram, in the datagram network, it's different. No setup is needed. Right? No setup is needed. Uh, but a more complicated no up procedures, a more complicated locking up procedures. This is a locking up procedures. It is address passing time. This is address passing time. Right? Locking up means address passing time. Address means <clears throat> looking up a uh, looking up a suitable routing based on the address that is address passing looking up a good routing based on address based on the destination address so they are same address passing and the looking up procedures it is required to locate the entry for the destination. This is the entry. The so entry means usually a rotor has usually a rotor has a road a routing table, right? Usually has a routing table. Then the rotor should look up search the the routing table and match the destination address with the first uh, column of the routing entries then find okay search the locate the entry for the destination then we know forward the packet to this outgoing lines that is uh, looking up procedures and address passing. Inside the network, network several trade-offs exist between virtual circuit or uh, the, the setup time and the address passing and the, the but uh, for the virtual circuit, but for the virtual circuit, this uh, looking up procedures is not needed because in the virtual circuit network, based on virtual circuit numbers, usually virtual circuit number is short and have local meanings. Uh, another issue is the, the amount of table space. Amount of table space is memory. Usually, uh, routing table occupies some uh, amount of memories uh, required in router. 
A datagram network needs to have an entry for every possible destination, whereas a virtual circuit network just needs an entry for each virtual circuit. Virtual circuit has have some advantages in guaranteeing quality of service, quality of service, and avoiding congestion within the network. So, no, the quality of service and that the they are within the network within the network which is that is, that is uh, why virtual circuit can provide or can guarantee the qs and avoid the congestion because virtual circuit virtual circuit we are allocated the resources in advance when established connection. If there is no enough resources, the virtual circuit will not reject it. Will not reject it. So if virtual circuit can establish successfully, that means the network have enough resources to guarantee the quality of service. So, if no enough resources, then virtual circuit will not establish. So, virtual circuit can guarantee quality of service. For example, in network, in internet, in internet, in internet, we can access the internet free freely uh, at any time but probably we have congestion in the network but uh, in the telecommunication network based on the virtual circuit then usually if the network is busy then the network will reject you for set up the connection but for internet the the network never rejects the users to establish the connection uh, connection so uh, because virtual circuit need a uh, guarantee or resource uh, reservation in advance so they can guarantee the quality of service this resource is uh, Includes buffers. Buffers means, also means memory, memory, bandwidth, and the CPU cycles. CPU cycle uh, can be these resources can be reserved in advance when the connection is established with a datagram network congestion avoidance. It's more difficult. So virtual circuit. So just now we explained why virtual circuit uh, can guarantee quality of service. For transaction processing systems, transaction usually, for example, stores calling up to verify credit card purchases this is a transaction transaction processes usually includes requests and the replies requests and the re replies the, the overhead required to set up and clear a virtual circuit may easily dwarf the use of the circuit Okay, let's have a rest for 10 minutes. Let's have a rest. 
Let's have a rest for 10 minutes. Please keep connection. Let's have a rest for 10 minutes.
<clears throat> okay, and uh, let's continue. <clears throat> Uh, just now we have talked about the comparisons of uh, virtual circuit and datagram networks. So uh, we know each of the uh, each one have is uh, each one has its uh, advantages and its uh, disadvantages. Sometimes we we need uh, virtual circuit. But sometimes we need the other type of services. For transaction processing system, this is a, a typical of, uh, application. The overhead required to set up and a clear virtual circuit may easily dwarf the use of the circuit. The transaction processing system it is a short-term living application. On the other hand, for long-running uses, such as a VPN traffic between two corporate offices, permanent virtual circuit may be useful. So they have different, uh, uh, so they have different uh, uh, suitable application scenarios. Virtual circuit also have a vulnerability problem. If a router crashes and loses its memory, even if it comes back up a second later, all the virtual circuits passing through it will have to be aborted. In contrast, if a datagram router, if a datagram router goes down, only those users, only those users whose packets were queued in the in the router at that time, at that moment of router crash, router crash, and at that time when a router crash, only those users whose packets were queued in the router need to suffer need to suffer so the loss of a communication line is fatal to virtual circuits using it but can easily be compensated for if datagram are used the main function of network layer is routing packets from the source machine to the destination machine. In most network, packets will require multiple hops to make the journey. The algorithms that choose the roads and the data, data structures that we use are a major area of network layer design. So we will talk about the routing algorithms. Routing algorithm is that part of network software network layer software for put line an incoming packet should be transmitted on should select suitable output line output line if the network uses datagrams internally this decision must be made new for every arriving data packet since the best road may have changed since last time. Uh, if the network uses virtual circuit internally, routing decisions are made only when a new virtual circuit is being set up. It is sometimes called session routing. So during the session, during the session, during the period of the session, the users 
uses the same virtual circuit. So virtual circuit lasts the whole the whole time of the session. So it is sometimes useful to make a decision between routing and forwarding. Uh, one can think of a router as having two processes inside it. A routing process is responsible for filling in and updating the routing table. A forwarding process handles each packet as it arrives, looking up, looking up the outgoing line to use for it in the routing routing table. So routing routing process will generate and maintain this kind of routing table. Right? So routing process will generate and update this kind of routing table. The forwarding process during this kind of things now when a new packet arrived with its head information then the forwarding table will get the destination address then looking up this routing table which entry we should select which entry then looking up the routing table and select a uh, best route and forward this forward this uh, the packet to the outgoing interface so this is two components certain properties are desirable in a routing algorithm Correctness, simplicity, robustness, stability, fairness, and efficiency. Once a major network comes on the air, it may be expected to run continuously for years without the system-wide failures. The routing algorithm should be able to cope with the changes in the topology and traffic without requiring all jobs in all hosts to be aborted. A stable algorithm reaches equilibrium and stays there. It should converge quickly too. And the fairness and efficiency may sound obvious. Fairness and efficiency sound obvious, but uh, Sometimes they are uh, a bit difficult to realize. So, but uh, as it turns out, they are often contradictory goals. So we cannot uh, satisfy the two sides uh, simultaneously. So usually we should select the main goals. So. They are contradictory girls, often contradictory girls. So you can select the fearless, you can select efficiency. But sometimes we cannot get the best uh, uh, girls uh, at the same time. Before we can even attempt to find the trick offs between fairness and efficiency, we must decide what is we seek to optimize minimizing the mean packet delay the mean packet delay it is is an obvious candidate to send traffic through the network effectively but so is maximizing total network throughput as a compromise uh, many networks attempt to minimize the distance, minimize the distance a packet must travel, or 
simply reduce the number of hops a packet must take. So they are often contradictory goods. Fairness and eff eff efficiency. Routing algorithm can be grouped into two major classes. Two major classes are many places we refer the two major classes. Uh, services, uh, we have uh, connectionness and connection oriented. Here, routing, routing algorithm, non adaptive and adaptive. Uh, non adaptive means uh, static routing. This is non adaptive, means uh, static, static, static. Adaptive means uh, dynamic. Uh, dynamic uh, non adaptive algorithms do not base their routing decisions on any measurements or established uh, or estimates of the current topology and the traffic. This procedure is sometimes called static routing. Adaptive algorithms. Uh, adaptive uh, uh, routing algorithm, in contrast, uh, changing their routing decisions to reflect changes, to reflect the changes in the topology, in the topology, and sometimes changes in the traffic as well. In the traffic as well. So that is why. So okay. For, for example, from so this is a host, denoted the host one, right? Denoted the host one. And this is host two. So I found it is difficult for me to write in with the mouse. It is difficult for me to write with the mouse. Uh, Okay, for example, if this is a, a non-adaptive, probably we can, uh, the operator, the manager of network, the network of manager can set up a static routine, no choice, only one static routine. So the package can, the packets can deliver through this path. But if we adopt adaptive algorithms, then the topology, then the routers can determine the road, routing choice to reflect the change in the topology. So if this links is bad, is destroyed, then routers can follow this path. If this link is destroyed or this link is busy, is broken or busy, then the routers can change the routing, right? So this is based on if this is uh, if the link is broken, then change based on topology, right? If the if the links is busy, then change it packets to this then according to the traffic right so they are different this dynamic routing algorithm this this dynamic routing algorithms differ in where differ in where they get their information where they get their information, when they change the roads, 
And what metric is used for optimization? So the differs in these places, differs in these aspects. Uh, where they get their information, for example, locally from adjacent routers. Adjacent routers means uh, connect directly. Adjacent routers from adjacent routers or a local or from adjacent routers or from all routers in the network. When, when we change the roads, when the topology changes, based on topology, right? When the topology changes, for example, uh, some routers or some links destroyed, then the topology changes. Or every delta t, every delta t means uh, every after every some time the constant times not delta t as the node changes node change here node is the same meaning as the traffic right traffic traffic node traffic node so uh, as the node changes. And what metric is used? Metric means, metric means the, how can we mirror the, the property of the network? Or how can we uh, mirror the properties of the links? And based on the optimization, uh, based on the uh, what kind of metric, the distance, distance, number of hops, and uh, or estimated trans transit time, estimate estimated transit time, so the distance, the distance, the number of hops, hops, and the delay, the delay. So that is, uh, for example, for example, we have a link from rotor one and we have a rotor denoted by rotor two they have links okay the distance between the two routers is the the unit is meters or kilometers, right? The hops, the number of hops from R1 to R2, only one hops, right? From, from one rotor to another, the, to adjacent rotor, to adjacent rotor, here adjacent rotor, the hops, only one only one one hop and the estimated transit time transmitted time usually is tall tall plus t tall plus t this is a propagation delay the transmission time and the queen time, etc. So this a distance, is a hops, and then transmission time. So we have several 
of the humanity, of the humanity principles. We can make a general statement about the optimal routes without regard to network topology or traffic. This statement is known as optimality principle. So since this is an opti optimality principle, it's very, very important. So it is this, how it, what, what it is this? It is these uh, three points. This, this, uh, it, it states that it is this that uh, if we wrote uh, J, where is J? This is I. It's a J. Root I root J. If root J is on the optimal path from root I to root K. For root K, sorry, here is K, right? If root J, if root J is on the optimal path, so here is optimal path from I, from I, to K, if, so you have other routers. So if router J is on the optimal path from router I to router K, then the optimal path, the optimal path from J to K the optimal path from J to K also falls along the same road. You probably will think it, it is uh, certainly, but uh, it is a statement. How to prove this statement? So this is uh, is a statement. If J on the optimal path from I to K, then the optimal path from J to K also falls along the same road. It is a statement. How to prove this statement? To see this, call the part of the root from I to J. From I call the part of the road from I to J denoted by R1. Denoted by R1. And the rest of the road denoted by R2. Right? Denoted by so from I to J denoted by R1 from J to K denoted by R2. If the root, if a root, if there is exists, a, a root exists, an other exists better than R2. If there is a bad, a root better than two, if we have a root better than R2 existed from J to K. So if we if we have another root R3, if we have another three, another root R3 better than R2, then R3 could be concatenated with R1 to improve the root from I to K. That is, uh, contradicts the, uh, contradicting our statement that R1, R2 is the optimal. 
right? If there is a, another, it is a better route from J to K, then R1, R3 is the optimal path from I to K. So, contradicting our statement that R1, R2 is the optimal. So, that is how to improve the statement. It is easy to improve the statement. So, the internet routing algorithms usually based on this, the Behrman's statement. It's the statement. As a, as a direct consequence, as a, as a direct consequence of optimality principle, we can see that the set of optimal routes from all sources to a given destination form a tree rooted at the destination. Such a tree is called a six tree. Why a six tree? Because this kind of a tree rooted at the destination rooted at the destination so the seek seek means the destination so the this kind of b here b is destination so this source to the destination right the source to the destination because b the tree rooted at the destination. This is a road, right? This is a source. This is a source. So source to the destination, right? So figure six shows a network. <coughs> and subfigure B <coughs> shows a six tree for root B, root B. Note that a sick tree is not a necessary unique. It's not necessary unique. Other trees with the same path lens, with the same path lenses may exist. So it is euro, not euro, not necessarily unique. So that means probably several trees have the same pass length. Which one we should use? Any one of any one of them can be uh, used. So if we are now all of the possible paths to be chosen, the tree becomes a more general structure called DAG, means directed, means a directed, uh, a cyclic, a cyclic graph. Directed a cyclic uh, graph. What is the, the meaning of a cyclic? A cyclic means like this, like this. It is a tree, not without a loop. This is a cyclic. There is a cyclic, right? But uh, subfig B is a tree, right? Is a tree. There is no loop. There is no loop in the tree. So it's a, a cyclic graph with have no loops. <clears throat> the optimality principle and the thick tree provide a benchmark against which other routing algorithms can be measured. 
So of the optimality principle and the SIG tree provide a benchmark, a benchmark against which other routing algorithms can be mirrored. That means if you design a routing algorithm, you should <coughs> compare the performance with the optimality principle and the SIG tree because they usually provide a benchmark. A benchmark means the standard, the standard. The benchmark means it is not good, but also not bad. It is a, a benchmark. You can compare your uh, routing algorithm with it. Let's uh, begin our study of routing algorithms with uh, a simple technique for computing optimal passes given a complete picture of the network. The idea is to build a graph of the network with each node of the graph representing a router and each edge, each node of the graph present representing a router. For example, in the network, we have routers and we can build a graph with nodes representing a router. And we have an edge representing a link. So the graph is a kind of abstract of the real network. To choose a route between a given pair of routers, choose a route between a given pair of routers, the algorithm just finds the shortest path between them on the graph. Finds the shortest path between, between them on the graph, between a pair of, a given pair of routers, right? So you should find the shortest path. Now, figure seven, figure seven, shows how the shortest path algorithm works. The first the six steps used in computing the shortest path from router A, here from router A to router D, to router D, find computing the shortest path. So this is a famous, uh, graphs. We have uh, many passes from the source A to the destination D. But which one is better? Which one? Which pass is the best? Is the best routine? So the shortest pass algorithm is used to find the shortest pass from A to D. The arrows, arrows, so arrows indicate the working node, the working node B, E, G, F, and H. This is the first, first the six steps. First, the six steps. The first thing is A. <clears throat> so we this kind of shortest path algorithm usually adopt uh, digital digital uh, algorithms to find the shortest path um, from one node to another node. We will not uh, discuss in detail how the digital algorithm works. 
One way of marrying past, marrying past names, marrying past names is the number of hops. If if we marry the links with uh, the number of hops, then from A to B is one, B to C is one, C to D is one. So each link has the cost of, of one hop, right? So this is a kind of merriment. Using this metric, the path A, B, C, and A, B, E, A, A B, C, and A, B, E, if we use the number of hops as merriment, as metric, then they have the same cost, right? They are equally long because they have the the both have two hops. Both have two hops, so they are equally long. Another metric is geographic distance. Geographic distance. Geographic distance in kilometers. Probably ABC is clear much longer than ABE. ABC is 2 plus 7, 9. But ABE is 2 plus 2, is 4 kilometers. So ABC is much longer than ABE. So other metrics we will talk about next time. And so much for today. Bye.